Good morning. Welcome, guys, to Calvary Chapel Almani. How's everybody doing? It's wonderful to see you. It's wonderful to see you. It really is. Can you guys uh, stand up, please, as we start with a word of prayer? You know, uh, God's word in James says that uh, the prayer of a righteous man avails much. Were it not for God's grace, none of us would be righteous. But know this, if you've been washed by the blood of Christ, when you pray, he's listening. So as I lead in prayer, you guys also pray. It's not listen to Mark day, it's let's lift up the Lord day. Amen? Dear Father, we come before you. Just so thankful, Father, for your grace, your abundant grace, Father, your tremendous tenderness and love, Father. We thank you for all those things, Father. We come before you, Father, knowing we don't deserve a thing that you give us, Father, but accepting your grace with gratitude, Father, with open heart, with a desire to please you, Father. We come before you asking for forgiveness, Father. We lift you up, Father. We pray for our sweet, sweet, sweet sister Nadine, Father. As we all pray, Father, we come before you as an audience of one, we come to you, Father. And we lift her up, Father. We thank you for Sister Mercy, for Sister Donna, for Sister Maria, for uh, sweet Laura who came in this morning who had been having so many seizures and she was able to sit through service. I, I praise you, Father. I ask, Father, for uh, <clears throat> the anointing upon our pastor, the strengthening of the Alvarez family, Father. Anoint all your listeners, Father, and anoint and dwell in your praises, Father, I ask. In Jesus' name I pray and we all say, Amen. Yeah. 
judge our judge and our defender suffered and crucified forgiveness is in you descended into darkness you rose in glorious light forever seated high I believe I believe in God our Father That we will rise
to make his praise glorious. For his name. So make his praise, so make his praise. For his name, for his name. So make his praise, so make his praise. To our God we lift up with one voice to our God. do thank you lord or as we continue to come in this time of worship lord we lift your name up god and lord we pray again god that uh, lord we would be focused completely on you lord and nothing else right now god despite different things going on in our lives god we just ask god that you would strengthen us you would lord just fill us right now god and just lord allow our attention to be completely on you and nothing else lord we thank you for your love and your grace for us lord we praise you we lift you up god this morning. We thank you and we ask these things in Jesus' name. Together we all agreed and said, Amen. You guys can have a seat if you want or you can stand if you want.
From the darkness I called your name Into darkness Your mercy came For you called me out You lifted me up How great is your love You bore my weakness You took my shame You buried my burdens In fields of grace Well, you call me out, God me up. Oh, how great is your love. From the heights of heavens, you step down to earth. The innocent perfection, you gave your life for us, and we are amazed. Oh, we stand. Into darkness, your mercy came. You called me out, lifted me up. How great is your love! You bore my weakness, you took my shame, you buried my. Me up. How great is 
down to earth innocent perfection you gave your life for us and we are amazed who we stand in all we have been changed by the power of the cross how great There's a space in every beating heart Well, there's a longing that reaches past the stars Well, there's an answer to every question mark Well, there's a name There's a hope through the pain Well there's an ember ready for the flames Well there's an There's a space 
Just you guys, love has a name. God so awesome. You know, God is love, and he's just poured out that amazing love on us, and he continues to pour it on us, right, when we, even when we don't deserve it. And we, in turn, could share that love with others, right? Why don't we, I just want to welcome everybody. Um, you know, we have a couple of prayer requests. Uh, first of all, uh, there's a gentleman. His name is Wyatt Rainier. He's a police officer. He was a in a car pursuit, and I guess his car rolled over, and he suffered some head injuries. So he's in the hospital recovering uh, uh, from a concussion. Just keep him in prayer. And, of course, we want to keep uh, Nadine uh, and, and the family in prayer as well, that the Lord will continue to have his hand upon the whole situation. Of course, that he would heal her completely. Uh, the, I guess the plan, the decision was that she's going to receive uh, another bout of chemotherapy, and then... Um, receive a bone uh, marrow transplant. So the Lord is working, and he's going to be glorified in and through it. Amen? So we, we have some announcements. Um, the Harvest Crusade, uh, the final day to, is today. Um, who's been to the Harvest Crusade this weekend? 
you know, God is moving there. You know, that, that crusade's been going on for about 28 years, and there's about 500,000 new believers that have come to Christ through that. And just on Friday, there was 1,500 new believers that came to Christ. So God is touching the hearts, right? So keep that in prayer for tonight. Uh, tonight, the, the gates open at 5 p.m. and the crusade uh, starts at 7 p.m. So invite a friend. You know, we're all called to, to invite, right? And, and the Lord does the rest. You know, so it's an awesome, awesome outreach that's been going on and working powerfully through our Great Glories ministry. And with that being said, you know, the, there's a ministry that we started here, uh, the, the follow-up that goes on with these new believers that came to Christ through that crusade. Uh, we're asking people who would love to serve in that just to call uh, these new believers. Uh, these are believers that came to Christ through the crusade. They're, they live in the area of Almani, and it's just calling them and, and, and just congratulating them, welcoming them to the family of God, encouraging them, uh, as well as inviting them to Calvary Chapel Amani. So if you're interested, there's a sign-up sheet out there in the foyer, and, and, and we could talk about that. But that's a blessing, you know, to be used in that, in that way. Uh, just to remind you, uh, there's Spanish translation services during this service, uh, and the headsets are available in the back counter. The Young Adults Fellowship is not going to happen t uh, tonight because of the Harvest Crusade. Uh, next one will resume next Sunday. Uh, we're excited uh, for the ladies. They're going to be starting their fall women's study. Uh, the sign-ups will be starting next week, and there's more information uh, to come. The men's retreat, uh, we're excited about that. Uh, that It's actually full, and so now we have a, a wait list going on. So um, if anybody's still interested in that, you could sign up in the foyer. There's a sign-up. It's a wait list. There's usually uh, some people do cancel uh right before the event, so there's still uh, room uh, in that respect. So if you're still praying about it, you can still sign up, and if, if the Lord wills, he will open up that slot for you. And just to remind you, those who have signed up, the, the balances are due uh, next Sunday, August 27. There's a servant leaders class that's uh, scheduled uh, next Sunday, August 27, at 2 p.m. in room 2. Everybody's welcome to that, and that's been a blessing. And just to remind you about our singles uh, ministry um, that meets the second and fourth Monday of every month. They're going through the book of Ephesians. So if um, all singles are, 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 are invited, it's just a time just to fellowship and, and, and go through God's word and, and just be encouraged. Uh, marriage fellowship, our, our next uh, fellowship is scheduled for Saturday, September 9th at 6 p.m., Good time for food, fellowship, and the message on, a message on marriage from God's Word. That's going to be held here. So anybody that's interested, you could sign up. Um, it's a potluck, and you could sign up out in the foyer. And that's been a blessing. And those of you who have been part of the, the Married Couples Fellowship, uh, it's just a good time for couples to come together and get connected, get encouraged, prayed over, and again, hearing uh, God's Word on uh, in regards to marriage. Uh, all engaged couples are also invited, so uh, we encourage you to be a part of that. And we're also excited to announce uh, there's a movie night. Uh, we're going to start movie nights. Who, who likes movies? <laughs> so we're going to be starting that September 23rd at 7 p.m. here, uh, and we're going to be featuring the movie The Case for Christ. Who, who's has anybody seen The Case for Christ? It's an awesome movie, and it, it really is based on the best-selling book by Lee. Strobel, and he walks us through Strobel's investigations into the factual evidence for Christianity's claims re uh, regarding Jesus Christ. So it's an awesome movie. Invite a friend. It'll be a good time of fellowship, and I think we're going to have popcorn, so <laughs> it's going to be a good time, and I invite you to that. We're going to be having that every month, uh, Lord willing, uh, at the last uh, Saturday of every month, and again, that's at 7 p.m. And just to remind you about the Truth and Treat Harvest Festival for October 31st, uh, we're asking anybody who would like to serve in that. Uh, there's a sign-up sheet out there in the foyer as well. It's the biggest outreach we have here, reaching out to the community. There's, there's a lot of things going on out there. We set up in the back. There's games, and the, the, Lord, the, the Word is being taught. Uh, uh, the gospel is being uh, delivered, and it's just an awesome time just to reach out to the community in the a, in a, in a evening that that darkness uh, uh, tends to uh, 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 
happen a lot, right? People are out there, and it's just to bring the light in the, here in Almani. So anybody who wants to serve in that, we really would encourage you guys to be a part of that. And it's a blessing. So with uh, one more uh, announcement that was in, uh, in, the, in the bulletin, just to remind those who have signed up for the Israel trip, uh, if you haven't registered, we, are, we really would encourage you to register because we're trying to get a head count of who's really committed and you're still praying about it, that's, that's fine, but there is room, so you could still sign up, um, and that's going to be a blessing. You know, we're excited about that. It's the first time we'll be having a trip, just uh, us as a church, and there's going to be uh, just awesome teachings going on, and uh, it'll be, the Lord's going to move, just bringing the Bible uh, to life, right? It's just a different perspective that we could get as we visit the Holy Land. So I would encourage you guys to pray about it and, and be a part of that. Why don't we go ahead and bow our heads and as we receive uh, uh, the offerings uh, this morning. Lord God, we just thank you, Lord, uh, for your faithfulness, for your, for your grace, for that amazing love that you pour on us, Lord, who don't deserve it, Lord, but you continue to pour it on us, Lord. And, and we just give you all the praise and glory, Lord. We, we lift your name on high this morning, Lord. And we just uh, want to lift up uh, uh, White right near to you, Lord, that you just uh, put your healing hand upon him. Lord, that he would have a rapid recovery, Lord. And if he doesn't know you, Lord, that he comes to a saving faith. Or if he does, Lord, that he be encouraged and feel your presence, Lord. Give the doctors wisdom, Lord. And we do lift up Nadine as well, Lord, to you. And that you allow your miraculous hand just to be upon her, Lord. And just to heal her. That's the desire of our hearts, Lord. That you perform a miracle in and through that, Lord. And that you be glorified in that. Give the doctors wisdom in the treatment as... She'll be receiving chemo and, and the bone marrow transplant, that she would receive that, Lord, without rejection on that, Lord. So we just ask that you just allow your hand to be upon every aspect of that, Lord. And we do lift up uh, the offering this morning, Lord. We just thank you, Lord, that you are our sole provider, Lord. And everything that we own, it does belong to you, Lord. Though. So as we give back to you, Lord, that you multiply this, Lord, offering and that you use it in a, in a great way to further your kingdom here in Almani, Lord. And that it just uh, accomplished the purpose that you have in and through it, Lord. So we thank you for this time. Let you be glorified this morning in Jesus' name. That's in front of me. But we'll be thrown into the midst of the sea. Through it all, through it all, my eyes are on you. Through it all, through it all, is where. Through it all, through it all, my eyes are on you. It is 
this way oh, Grand Earth has quaked before Moved by the sound of his voice that are shaken and stirred can be calmed and broken for my regard. Oh, through it all, through it all, my eyes are on you. Through it all, through it all is well. Through it all, through it all, my eyes are on you. It is well to let go my soul and trust in him. The waves and wind still know his name. So let go my soul and trust in him. The waves and wind. They still know his name. So let go in my soul and trust in him. The waves and wind still know his name. So let go my soul and trust in him. The waves and wind they still know. And when they still know his name, the ways and when they still know his
all stand together. again thank you Lord Lord as we again we just take this time and we say thank you God it's so hard Lord at times to say it as well Lord when we're going through different things and I pray God you would forgive us forgive me Lord and just of different things going on Lord in, in my particular life Lord and all of us none of us are perfect Lord and we just pray God you would give us the strength to change to do things different Lord forgive us forgive me God Help us not to use just lame excuses, Lord, when we mess up and blow it and try to justify ourselves, Lord. Forgive me, Lord. I'm totally guilty of that, Lord. And Lord, as we continue this morning, God, I just pray, God, that you would forgive us, please, Lord. We're called to forgive and love, God, and Lord, give us that. And Lord, we just thank you, Lord, and, and Lord, just, I don't know, God, I'm, I'm totally almost speechless right now, Lord. But Lord, I know you know. You know every heart here us. Please, change us. We thank you. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Together we all agreed and said, before you guys take a seat, why don't you turn to each other and say good morning. Good morning. It's such a joy to see you today. Um, we got to keep our, our friends. Uh, there's about 100 people from the church that went camping this weekend at Kern River, and so they're making their way back. If you could lift them up in prayer. Um, they did some whitewater rafting, and from what I understand, only one person fell into the river. She survived, thank God. Um, but I remember when I went whitewater rafting, and that, that was a scary uh, thing, being in the river. But um, it's a joy to see you today. I also want to just ask for prayer for uh, Mary and Raymond. Some of you know them. Uh, they had a little boy. His name is Russell. This was uh, Monday or Tuesday, probably. And so, oh, we have a picture. Cool. <laughs> and I'm, I'm just so happy for them. 
you know, uh, Mary, just her story and the family. Richard is one of the pastors on staff, or not on staff, but he's a pastor, a layman, and uh, he, uh, his daughter is the one that had a little boy. And so keep him in prayer. I know she's going to be a great mom, a great dad. And uh, um, today, uh, you know, we've been praying for Nadine. Some of you know her story. She's 21 years old. She's battling cancer, leukemia. And as, as uh, Ray mentioned, uh, she's going to be going through chemotherapy and then uh, bone marrow transplant. And so keep her in prayer. All that stuff is happening is pretty much this week. And Natalie is her sister. She's the one that's uh, the donor. And uh, so lift them up in prayer. Um, but, you know, whenever we pray, and I don't know about you guys, but they're, we're constantly praying for her. She's like representative of a lot of others that are sick and some uh, battling cancer. Uh, some of you know Donna right here. She's doing well. Uh, Mercy is uh, right in the middle of treatments as well. And as a matter of fact, today's her birthday. And so I would say give her like 10 bucks at least or something. You know? <laughs> but you know, uh, the, the, the thing about a church is uh, I remember a long time ago learning early on in the ministry that you weep with those who weep and you rejoice with those who rejoice. And you know, you have one on this end. Yesterday we went to a wedding and, and here's a, a birth of a child. It's so beautiful. You rejoice with them. And then you also go through the, the hard times together. And so that's, uh, that's us. Uh, that's life in, in the ministry. And so I uh, want to mention that to you. We're going to pray in just a second. Also, just an encouragement regarding Israel. You know, um, some of you here, uh, you know, maybe you're still kind of weighing it out. Like, I'm not sure if I should go. I was really blessed by this one young man. Uh, he's a, a young adult. And, uh, I mean, doesn't have a lot of money, okay? I'm not going to tell you his name, but, you know, he was working, and he's a fairly new Christian, maybe about two years in the Lord, and, uh, and, and his, he found out that he was going to get this gift of uh, somewhere around three, $4,000. And so, what would you do with that gift? A lot of people here, well, if they got that type of money, they might buy a big screen or whatever, you know? invested into a car or just different things. And I'm not saying you should necessarily, you know, not do that. That's between you and the Lord. But I was super blessed with what this young man did with that. He said, I'm going to Israel. I am go I'm going to take that money that has been given to me and invest it into my walk. Because as, uh, as Ray was saying earlier, you know, not that you have to go and, you know, but I'm just saying that, that when you see it for what it is, an investment into your walk, that when I go and I see where Jesus prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane or I see the, the Mount Golgotha or when I, you know, walk the same Via Dolorosa or whatever it is, when you see the Mount of Beatitudes, the, the, the Sea of Galilee, all those types of things, when you see it with your own eyes, I tell you what, you'll never read this book the same. And so just in case there's someone wondering whether or not it's, it's worth the investment, I encourage you to rise up and, uh, and even learn from maybe a young man of what he's doing with those uh, types of funds. And so let's pray together. Lord, we thank you for loving us. We thank you for today and the opportunity we have to study your word together. Lord, I do pray that you would forgive me and cleanse me of my sins, that I can be a vessel. Because I love these people, Lord. I, I really do. Some of them I know, I still love them. Some of them I don't know. <laughs> and I love them. I, I just want, we want the best for them because I know that's your heart. And so, Lord, do a work today. Save uh, the, the lost. And, Lord, build up those who do know you. I pray for Nadine. You continue to work in her and Donna, Maria, Mercy. Laura, uh, Lord, uh, so many, Lord, that are struggling. I pray, Father, for your hand upon uh, Mary and Raymond as new parents, upon Russell, that he would grow to serve you, that you would give them wisdom as parents. And Lord, uh, for the group coming back from the Kern River, Lord, give them traveling mercies. And I just thank you so much for that beautiful time of fellowship they had. May it just uh, be something that would bring them back even stronger. And Lord, as we study your word, I do pray you would be our teacher. You'd open our eyes so that we might see wondrous things from your law. We love you and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Cool. Well, if you have a Bible today, let's open up to Mark chapter 16. 
As today we get to finish the book of Mark, um, as we're journeying through this gospel, I don't know if you knew this or not, some of you have been here with us the whole time, man, we started back in February 28th, 2016, think about that, and so it's taken uh, well over 17 months to finish this gospel, but remember, Mark is a gospel, what it is, is he wrote it so that people would know about the life of the Lord Jesus Christ, and that they would be saved. And it's been cool even for us here in the church to see as we've studied this gospel together that some people have indeed been saved during that time. And so today we pick it up in the middle of the account where the women arrive uh, to see an empty tomb and to hear the angels announce that Christ had risen. And then if you remember, we saw in verse 7 that they were to go and tell the disciples and Peter and spread the word regarding the empty tomb. But we pick it up now in Mark 16, beginning in verse 8. So they went out quickly and fled from the tomb, for they trembled and were amazed. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Now when he rose early on the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had cast seven demons. She went and told those who had been with him as they mourned and wept. And when they heard that he was alive and had been seen by her, notice they did not believe. After that, he appeared in another form to two of them as they walked and went into the country. And they went and told it to the rest, but they did not believe them either. And later he appeared to the eleven as they sat at the table and he rebuked their unbelief and hardness of heart because they did not believe those who had seen him after he had risen. And he said to them, go. Into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. And so then, after the Lord had spoken to them, he was received up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. And they went out and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word through the accompanying signs. Amen. And today as we go through our text, uh, we're going to see a few things that stand out. Number one, that he was seen. He was seen. And so, you know, it wasn't just an empty tomb. Jesus died on the cross for our sins. He rose again and he was seen. Secondly, we're going to see that we are sent. That we are sent. You guys, there's a lot of people out there who don't know the Lord. They're hurting. They're struggling. They're dying. And God wants us to go and share the love of the Lord and the message of Jesus to them. So it's not just for them, not just for pastors, not just for Greg Laurie, but for you. Because he did rise. He was seen. So we are sent. And then thirdly, we're going to see that there are signs. You know, the cool thing about being a Christian is not just a, a blind faith. I mean, there is evidence for this. Uh, it was evidence then the risen lord there's even evidence now you know i do encourage you as we have that movie we're showing uh the case for christ come if you haven't seen it invite friends who maybe don't know the lord they need like that tangible evidence that empirical evidence and uh, what you'll find is a story about a, a chicago tribune a writer who's an atheist whose wife had become a christian he found out he was discouraged. He didn't like the fact that she was serving the Lord. And so what he decided to do was examine the evidence and then, you know, kind of like debunk the whole thing. As a result, however, he became a Christian because the evidence really is overwhelming. We don't have a, a blind faith. We have a faith with substance. It's built on facts. And so you're going to see as we go through today. Number one, he was seen. Number two, we are sent. Number three, there are signs for us to see. And then fourth thing is we're going to see that when Jesus did all this work, that he went and he sat. And he sat down at that place of power. He sat down because he finished the work. And as we elaborate on these things, uh, my prayer is that God will work in our life. 
You know, I want to share with you guys, man, it was 28 years ago today, today that I gave my life to Jesus Christ. Uh, me, my wife, we went forward. And so today's our spiritual birthday. And so I'm um, super excited about that, man. You know, God has been gracious to us all these years. Uh, I never thought that I would be a pastor when I got saved, you know. Uh, I got saved, and all I knew is that something happened in my life. You know, prior to that, I was addicted to drugs and alcohol. I was doing everything that most young men do, and I could not stop. And I tried religion, but it was nothing. It was dead. And, uh, and I, I'll never forget, you know, what was happening. And some of you have heard the story before, but... Man, I had been dating my girlfriend for three years, but um, what had happened was things were getting kind of bad, and it was about time to break up, but still not really sure. And then I had some friends invite me to Las Vegas, and so we were going to go to Las Vegas, man, Sin City, and we had some uh, cocaine, and we had the girls lined up, and we had the weekend set. And I believe that if I would have gone on that trip, that my life would be completely different. But what happened one day was I was working. I was just at work, and some guy understood that Jesus was seen, that there were signs, that Jesus sat down, and some guy understood as a Christian that he, he was sent. And so one day we're there at work, and, you know, we're throwing up the apples, and we're working together, and we're having this little conversation. And he asked me, he said, are you a Christian? And I said, yeah, because I thought I was, but I really wasn't. And so he said, oh, cool, what church do you go to? And I said, I go to St. Christopher's. And so I asked him, well, what church do you go to? He said, Calvary Chapel. And he just said, well, you, wanna, you should come one day. That's all he said, nothing weird. He just invited me. Quick question, when was the last time you invited someone to church? When was the last time you invited someone, you know, maybe to a crusade or an event, something like that? You know, he, he just did that, real simple. Uh, and, you know, as a result of that, I told my wife, hey, in order to get this guy off our back, we better go to church one day. And uh, so we ended up going. And uh, that night, when the pastor gave the message, I don't remember anything. I don't really remember what he said. All I knew is that I was a sinner and I needed Jesus. And that night I went forward and we gave our life to Christ. And I'll tell you what, man, the burden was lifted. The chains were broken. My sins were washed away. I will never forget that night. God did a miracle in me that is undeniable. Never drank again, never did drugs again. We stayed pure until we got married. And then, you know, just, you know, as a Christian, man, next thing you know, I knew I needed to be in church, and I started having a desire for the Lord, and I would read books, and I would just read my Bible, pray. God blesses us with a little girl. God blesses us with a little boy, because three years later, we got married. And, you know, never thinking I was going to be a pastor, never knowing anything other than this. And this is really the key to life, man, that I just knew that I had been saved. And I wanted to get to know Jesus. And just going forward, you know, and just, man, step by step, the Lord just began to do different things. I mean, we, you know, when I first got saved, I would do a Bible study with my, with my father-in-law, who was uh, at that time you know, dying of cancer, and we would, you know, study the Gospel of John together. And then I did a little Bible study over here where people would have uh, mental breakdowns, former doctors and lawyers and just different things. And I was there, and it was amazing because even though these people were mentally struggling, they knew the Lord. And when we prayed, you know, it was just amazing to see the spiritual relationship they had. And then we did a uh, Bible study and worship for the convalescent home and and, you know, for years, Shelly and I were there, and just different things, and to see what God has done in the past 28 years. I mean, I got saved when I was two, but <laughs> no, actually, I was 22, but just to see his faithfulness over the years, and everything that we're going to talk about today, it really has a lot to do with all those things, you know? I mean, 
the first thing we see, just so simple, is that he was seen. He was seen. Notice again there in verse 9, it says, And now when he rose early on the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had cast seven demons. You know, Mary Magdalene is such a beautiful woman. And I think a large part of the fact that she was so faithful was because, man, she had been through this life before Christ. Think about what life would be having seven demons living inside of you. Now, real quick, I want to touch on that whole aspect of demon possession. You got to beware, you guys. You have to beware of that because you need to tell your friends out there who don't know the Lord to be so careful that they don't open the doors to demons. You open doors to demon possession through drugs, Satanism, spiritism, fortune tellers, astrology, a santeria, occults, a, uh, a lot of other things. You have to beware of that because that opens doors for demons to come inside and they will torment a soul. Now, I want to tell you that that has to do with non-believers, but for believers, I also need to tell you this, that a believer can't be possessed by a demon. They can be oppressed, but not possessed. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 6, 19, that we're the temple of God, that God lives in us. And if God lives in us, there ain't no devil going to live in us. 1 John 4, 4, it says, greater is he who is in you than he was in the world. That means that God who lives in you is greater than the devil. They're not going to live in the same residence, not in the same body. And so it's weird and it's wrong when you see some churches try to cast out demons from Christians. That's unbiblical. It's impossible for God and the devil to possess the same body. But, but just having said that, um, imagine what it would be like having seven demons and then having Jesus cast them out. And so I actually have a little clip of a movie I want to show you. And I know we normally don't do this during the middle of a Bible study. But have you guys ever seen that movie, The Miracle Maker? The Miracle Maker, it's a cartoon, claymation, uh, combination. I love it. And so um, there's a little scene in there because when, you know, we could just read this, you know, Mary Magdalene, he cast out seven demons and just move on and now ponder what Jesus had done for her. You know, so let's roll that real quick and then we'll come back. I encourage you guys, if you can't see the, the whole movie. Um, but you know, you're, you wonder about this woman, Mary, you know, how she was there at the cross. On Sunday uh, morning, she was one of the group to go and anoint the body. Uh, she gets sent back. She tells Peter and John, and they go back. And she goes back with them, unlike the other ladies. And then they look in. They don't see his body there in the tomb. But she stays there, and she just begins to weep. She just was weeping right there. And then, you know, uh, the angels tell her, why are you weeping? The, and then Jesus, you guys know the story there in John chapter 20. You know, the, the Lord, he just says, Mary. And then she knows his voice. And she says, Rabboni. And she just latches to him. You know, maybe you've forgotten, maybe we've forgotten what Jesus Christ has done for us. You know, some of you here, I know your stories, man. Demons. 
demons had their clutches on you. They had their hands on you. They thought that you were set, dead set to go to hell. But Jesus Christ has set you free. Mary was faithful. She was appreciative of what God had done for her. And therefore, as a result of that, staying so close to the Lord, she was the first to see the risen Lord. And we have that whole account in John 20, 11 through 18. And so we read it here, the first to see him after she saw him. We read in Mark 16, right here in 10 and 11, that she then went and told those who had been with him. This would include the apostles as well as the disciples. And they were there mourning and weeping, wondering. And then walks Mary with the message. And when they heard, however, that he was alive, that she said this, they did not believe. And so Mark here is just basically saying he was seen. He was seen, first of all, by Mary. And then he was seen, second of all, by the two that we read of there in verse 12. After that, he appeared in another form to two of them as they walked into the country. And we have this complete story in the Gospel of Luke 24, 13 through 35. If you remember, one of them was Cleopas, and they were headed seven miles in the wrong direction. They had heard about this stuff, and they thought Jesus was the Christ, and they thought then he died, but then they heard some rumors that he was alive, and they just didn't know what to make of anything. And so there is definitely something significant about the fact that they're walking away in the wrong direction. Maybe you're here today, and in all reality, you find yourself walking in the wrong direction. I, I just know, there's no doubt in my mind that Jesus is here and he approaches you just like he approached them. As they're walking on the road, the Lord just comes up and says, Hey, hey guys, what's going on? What's up, man? What are you guys talking about? And then they start, you know, well, you know, we're talking about the whole thing that happened there in, in Jerusalem. He's like, what? What thing? They're like, you haven't heard? And so they fill him in and they're bummed out. And Jesus then fills them in with the truth. And he says, man, that's what the Bible said was supposed to happen to the Messiah. He was supposed to suffer and die and rise again. And as they were as they were listening to the Lord, the Bible says that their hearts were just burning inside of them. And so then they said as they were traveling down the road, it started getting a little late. They wanted him to eat with them. They come, stay with us. And he's like, "Nah." And then they're all, "Well, come on, come on." A little insistent, so he finally does. And as they're there about to break bread, he prays for the meal, and then their eyes were open, right? You guys remember that story? And then they understood that it was Jesus whom they had seen. So it's late at night. They don't have lights. This is very rare. What they end up doing right there and then, even though it's late, is they head back to tell the guys. But we read in our text that they didn't believe him. And so what's Mark trying to say? Is Mark trying to say is that he was seen, not just an empty tomb, but a risen body. He was seen by Mary and he was seen by the two on the road. And, you know, I don't know if the girls came and told you that, you know, I kind of understand maybe that you wouldn't believe, you know. Let me ask you a question, for example. Here's like a little experiment. What if a few teenage girls told you that Justin Bieber came to the first service, okay? I mean, honestly, if, if, if just a couple of girls told you that whoever it is, Justin Bieber came to the first service, I would venture to say that most of you would think they're pulling your leg, right? Either that or they're hallucinating, right? That's probably what you would think, right? So, but, but what if 50 people told you that they saw Justin Bieber in the first service and not just teenage girls, but a combination of girls and guys. Now, I'm not saying you necessarily be excited. I don't know if you like Justin Bieber or not, but I'm just saying that now it begins to be more credible. Now it begins to be more believable. Well, what if the 50 turns to 500? 500 people told you that they saw you know, Justin Bieber in the first service, it's not just credible, it's incredible, it is undeniable. You see, and that's exactly what happened, you guys. You know, 1 Corinthians 15, 3 through 8, Paul said, I passed on to you what was most important and what had been passed on to me. Christ died for our sins, just as the scriptures said. He was buried and he was raised from the dead on the third day, just as the scriptures said. 
He was seen by Peter and then by the 12. And after that, he was seen by more than 500 followers at one time. Most of them are still alive, though some have died. And then he was seen by James and then later by all the apostles. Last of all, as though I had been born at the wrong time, I also saw him. And all we're trying to say is this, the evidence, man, you're a jury. You got to make a decision whether or not you will give your life to Jesus Christ. Whether or not you will see that he was seen so that you can be sent. You know, the other day, Angel and I went to lunch, a great lunch down the street over here. But it's right by this one street where all the, 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 the high schoolers, you know, they get out of school and they're walking right there. And they go and they get their candy and sodas and stuff at the little store. And I tell you what, what do you, when you see all those high schoolers there, what do you want to do? Man, you want to share the Lord with them. You know, we got these harvest uh, crusade invitations, or maybe you might have a track or something. I mean, why would you not want to share with them? Why are we so busy living our own life that we don't share? We don't realize that he was seen and we are sent. You know, I mean, when you look at this whole story here, I mean, there's no doubt that he rose. You know, it's interesting, 1 Corinthians 15 that that book was written in AD 57. Jesus passed. He died on the cross in AD 33. I think that's 24 years of these people being alive and spreading the word. That's why when you look at the evidence, you have the Christian manuscripts. You have the non-Christian historical archaeological evidence. That's why whenever anybody smart looks at the evidence, they become Christian. Like Simon Greenleaf, who was the dean of law at Harvard University. Like Frank Morris. Like so many others. We're reading about, you know, Lee Strobel. I mean, the evidence is there. He was seen. I mean, there are eyewitnesses. Any of you guys here ever watch Eyewitness News? You know I'm talking about? That's what this is. Eyewitness News. Man. Luke 1 and 1 and 2, it says, Many people have set out to write accounts about the events that have been fulfilled among us, they use the eyewitness reports circulating among us from the early disciples. Peter as well, he said, for we did not follow cunningly devised fables. We made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. In 2 Peter 1, 16. And so when Mark is writing this, uh, hopefully you can catch what he's saying that he was seen. But, but then as Mark is writing this, he's, he's sharing the message that we are sent. That he sent the ladies there in verse 8. You know, the angel said, go and tell the disciples. And Peter, you know, the empty tomb, the message that he's risen. He's going to see you in Galilee. And they did that in Luke 24, verse 9. They returned from the tomb and told all these things to the eleven and, and to the rest. And then if you look at verse 15, notice what it says here. In our chapter, that the, the, the we are sent. He said to them, go. Go. Get up off the couch. Oh, but I'm taking a nap. Yeah, you've been doing that for about seven days now, man. Seven years. Go. Go into all the world and, and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will, will be saved. But he who does not believe will, will be condemned. I mean, we're supposed to go into all the world. And so it's such a blessing to see some of you here. You get that heart. You go on missions trips. Some of you here, you go with the jet team on a Saturday. And you go handing out tracks. Um, you know, but I, I will tell you this. I mean, you, it's easy to go maybe sometimes on a missions trip. But what about your next door neighbor? You know, what about that person that you know that you heard through you know, some resource that they're, they're hurting inside or they're in the hospital or whatever the case may be. We are called to go. Are you going? Are we going? Where do we go? He says into all the world to do what? To sightsee. No, I'm just joking. He doesn't say that. You know, he says to preach the gospel. And when you think of the gospel, that he's so simple. You know, a lot of people think, well, I can't do it because, man, I don't got the degree or I haven't been to seminary yet or whatever. I'm not eloquent yet. You know, I mean, 
I'm not Greg Laurie. Well, you want to know? You can be. Maybe you, maybe you all will be the next Greg Laurie or Billy Graham or something. I mean, I'll bet you that's possible with all of you that are here today. You know, why did Greg Laurie become this evangelist that God uses? It's got nothing to do with Greg. It's got everything to do with God's grace. And it's got everything to do with the power of the gospel, not the power of Greg. But I will say this, that there was a time in his life where he got up and he went. As an early Christian, what he did was he took this little book and he went to the beach and he saw someone there. And he just said, you know what, I'm going to share with people. And so he went up to this person and he just started sharing the simple gospel. I, I, you know, I just, I, I, are you, do you know that you're a sinner and that you need a savior? And his name is Jesus and he died on the cross. It rose again the third day. And if you believe in him, that you'll be saved. That's the gospel. That's all you got to share. And when he did that, he was so you asked her, well, do you want to receive the Lord? He get ready to walk away, not expecting her to say yes. She said, yes, I want to receive Christ as my Lord and Savior. And he didn't even know what to do then. He's like, okay, well, let me see what comes next. <laughs> and he says, well, here's a prayer to pray. And he led her to the Lord. They're on the streets, they're on the beach. Maybe that's why God has used him in such a great way. You know, I know we're busy. We've got a lot of things going on. Make sure you lead your family to the Lord. But man, there is a whole world. Because he was seen, we are sent to go and share the gospel. The gospel is good news. That's all it is. In a world of bad news, in a world of division, in a world of hate, There is the good news, the good news of unity in Christ. It doesn't matter what color your skin is. It doesn't matter if you're Jew or Gentile, male or female, rich or poor. It doesn't matter, right? There is this love of God. There is this good news that we have. In one sense, we have the the cure for cancer. When's the last time you invited someone to church? I mean, Pastor Chuck would always say, it's the sheep that beget the sheep. Healthy sheep beget sheep. You know, don't get caught up in your own world. Understand that we are sent, you know, to every creature. And the answer is, the reason is, is because we want people to believe and receive salvation rather than condemnation. You know, uh, the other day, my daughter knows I, I like coffee a lot. And she saw this thing. I don't know if it was on, on Pinterest. I'm not a Pinterest guy, okay? Don't m- make fun of me or anything. But she saw it on Pinterest. We have this uh, uh, acronym, coffee. And this is perfect, man, because I love coffee. How many of you guys love coffee? Just out of curiosity. Okay. Christ offers forgiveness for everyone every day. And so I tell you what, I, I'll even change that last E. You can, you know, interchange it with Christ offers forgiveness for everyone, every day, everywhere. And so we got to drink that cup of coffee, amen? And we got to make it stronger, right? And we got to go out with the good news. Hey, would you like a cup of coffee? That's how you can open it up, man. And you can tell him, I just want you to know That Jesus loves you. He knows you're going through the the struggles that you have. And he wants to forgive you of your sins. Don't commit the sin of silence. Share the Lord. You know, I know when you're working, I always tell guys, you know, you're, you're, you're put there. You know, part of the reason is, yeah, you're making money for your family. You know, and that's an awesome thing when you can do that. As a man, understanding that's why you got biceps, so that you can work and and you can support your family. But that's not really the main reason that God has you where he has you. God has you there to tell people about Jesus. You know, so I'm not saying you steal from your boss and, you know, you share while you're working per se. You know, I don't know. Every job is different. But during your breaks or as you're praying on your knees for your co-workers, this is a mission field where we live, relatives. Man, there needs to be an urgency inside of us because he did rise. He was seen and we are sent. You know, Matthew gives us more information in the Great Commission. 
In Matthew 28, 19 through 20, Jesus said, Go therefore and make disciples of the nations, baptizing them in their Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I command you. So it's not just making converts, it's making disciples, right? We're to go and we're to baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And what does that mean? Probably partially water baptism, but you go and you share with them about the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You teach them about God. You know how I've told you guys before, kind of how the Godhead works, how the Father is the executive producer, how the Holy Spirit is the director, and Jesus Christ is the superstar? You tell them about Jesus. You know, I was thinking about today, today being my spiritual birthday. How does salvation work? Well, I was chosen in time by the Father before time began. And then I was saved by the Holy Spirit when he died on the cross. I was saved by the Son when he died on the cross. But then I was saved by the Holy Spirit on August 20th, 1989, when he opened my eyes. So you start sharing with them about God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. This is what we're sent to do. This is the great commission. God, I pray it wouldn't be the great omission in our life. We get stuck on our own mission and we disown His. I mean, we're more interested in saving the whales, saving our planet. Nothing wrong with being a good steward of this planet, but when that becomes more important to you than souls, then something's wrong. You see, he was seen, we are sent, and then thirdly, there are signs. Look again, if you would, at verse 17. He says, and these signs will follow those who believe in my name. They will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. You know, and I'm blessed. I mean, I've seen the casting out of demons. I've been a part of that uh, because there's power in the name of Jesus, right? I've speak in tongues. Uh, God has given me that gift. Not everybody does, but these are signs that are still for today. You know, as far as the picking up snakes, I thought about trying it in front of you guys. I said, man, I better not. Because, you know, that's not what that means, okay? It's not a blanket promise. It's a, it's a general principle that God will protect us. You are invincible until you're done, until it's time to go home. And so you won't have to be afraid when you're out there. Sometimes we've done missions trips to Mexico, and some people are signed up. Yeah, let's go right on. Next thing you know, they hear about the cartel, or they hear about different things, and they're like, you know what? I changed my mind. You know, I had a dream or whatever. I mean, hey... You don't have to be afraid. That's all he's saying, that when you're in the will of God, there will be divine protection. There really will. You know, when you serve the Lord, you know, you're going to see healing. I mean, there have been times where I've healed people. I mean, I've, I've prayed over people. We've prayed over people. And instantly we see healing. Instantly. Right there. I mean, they were sick. They had the flu. They had the cold. They had the fever. Boom, it was gone or whatever. Praying for someone and they're going to have a surgery the next day. Pray over them. Next day, doctor says, you don't need a surgery. God can do that. He doesn't always. It's always according to his will. We have seen signs like that. In Cambodia, there was a guy who couldn't, couldn't walk, prayed over him. He, he walked. So the, the people around are just tripping out. They're like, wow, we have seen signs. I can tell you so many miracles that God has done in my life. I remember one time I was praying these nine words in my prayer closet. For weeks, nine words. I won't tell you what they were, but they were explicitly, specifically nine words. And then I remember, I remember one Sunday, a lady came up to me. She was just weeping, weeping. She was filled with the Holy Spirit. And you know what she did? She told me, God told me to tell you. And she quoted those nine words that I had been speaking in my prayer closet. And I can tell you about dreams, and I can tell you about prophecies, and I can tell you about all the signs that God has done in my life, just my life. See, this is true. I mean, this whole gospel of Jesus Christ is true because he was seen, and there are signs. And then, and then the last thing is that, is that he is seated. Again, look at verse 19. So then after the Lord has spoken to them, he was received up into heaven. And sat down at the right hand of God. And they went out and preached everywhere. The Lord working with them and confirming the word 
through the accompanying signs. See, to sit at the right hand of the Father, it means that Jesus had the position, the place of power. That's what we read throughout the scriptures. You know, when you look at um, Matthew 26, 64, Jesus said to him, it is, as you said, nevertheless, I say to you, hereafter you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the power. The power of God was given to the Lord Jesus Christ. And seating in that seat, he was then uh, conveying a message that he had finished the work. Hebrews 1.3, it says, When he had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. I mean, I don't know how it is with you guys. Um, we all have different jobs. How many of you have jobs where you sit all day? And you're like, man, I hate this. <laughs> you know, and then a lot of people, they have jobs where they're on their feet all day. And even some of you wives, beautiful homemakers, man. You're on your feet all day. You know, you're doing all these different things. You're washing, you're, you're, you know, you're cleaning and you're the dishes and ironing and making food and, and all that kind of stuff until finally, you know, praise God, eventually somewhere in there, you're like, man, I need to sit down, right? And finish, I've finished the work. That's kind of how it is with the Lord. The Bible talks about the priest. They would never sit down, never, because the work was never done. But Jesus sat down because the Bible says in the book of Hebrews over and over again, the work was done. And so all that, all this is just to say that, that he was seen, that, that there are signs, that he is seated, he finished the work, and with that place of power, he's with you. He's with you. You're not alone. We're okay, okay. So I am sent? Yeah. You're sent. The highways, the byways, the valleys, the alleys, the one on the gutter, the one in the skyscraper, the one on the other side of the world, the one down the street, the one that you text. You know, you are sent. But... You're not alone. Because the one that has all the power and all the authority and who's finished the work, it's just so cool to know, you know, that he really is with us. And so it's all summed up in the wonderful beverage we call coffee. It really is. <laughs> Let's show that screen one more time, man. Can you believe this? Christ offers forgiveness. That's our greatest need. Christ offers forgiveness for everyone, every day, even here today. And so, Lord, we thank you for loving us. Lord, we thank you for allowing us to study your word together, Lord. And, Lord, I want to thank you as uh, I just feel it inside of me, Lord. Um, just this overwhelming gratitude for your grace in my life. How 28 years ago today, you say, I'll never forget that day when you came into my life. And Lord, I pray that today, if there is anyone here that doesn't know you, that today would be their day of life, that they would make a decision to follow Jesus Christ, Lord, that they would know it's not a religion, it's a relationship, and that you offer forgiveness to them. It's the greatest news ever that you died for our sins, you rose again. And if we would place our faith in you, that we will be saved. And so, Lord, I pray you would work that work in every heart. And Lord, I just want to thank you so much for having your hand upon me and my wife all these years, and upon everyone here, Lord. This is an amazing God that we have. Continue, Lord, to work and help us to know that we truly are sent with this message. And Lord, I pray it would just burn in our hearts so, so greatly, Lord, that we would not, we could not hold it in. 
Again, I love you, Lord. I thank you. Lord, please bring life today. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's all stand together. And just in case you're here today and you need Christ, maybe you drifted away and you need to come back. Or maybe it's a first-time commitment. I tell you what, just in case, if that's you, as we sing this last song, uh, come forward. You know, come and stand up here in the front. And, uh, you know, either that or you can pray with the person who brought you or you can come afterwards. But, man, receive life. And the Bible says, if you're thirsty, come. If you're thirsty, come. Come as you are. Don't think that you've got to clean up your life first before, you know, you become a Christian because you'll never be able to clean up your life. Come to him as you are and let him clean your life for you. That's what he did for me. And so if you need to get right, if you need forgiveness, We've seen this last song. I'm not going to hang up uh, up here. I'm just going to be right here on the side. Come forward. Start a new life today. And then uh, any of you other, otherwise, um, after we've seen that song, we'll be up here and we would love to pray with you, okay? But come. Come to Jesus. Though the battle, though the battle. 
Bless you guys. Have a